Good evening, good evening, good evening. This is the Minister M.L. Kimball coming to you live this evening. And I want to go over a little bit, something a little bit different tonight, uh, because I do think it's very, it's it's time for me to speak publicly um, of the, the events that have transpired uh, in my life. And uh, I think this is worth public knowledge. So those of you that are watching this and viewing this, I thank you for your support. Please don't forget to like share and comment and if you haven't had a chance yet i want you to go to our youtube channel and subscribe over at word on the street with the minister ml kimball now i wanted to talk to you all tonight in regards to an incident that has transpired over two years ago in regards to my former business located in swanton ohio uh, a lot of you may or may be aware that uh, I had a lot of years working with McNeil Chevrolet as the finance manager in the Swanton area. And when I resigned from that position, I decided to open up a physical business of my own. And it was a CBD uh, location that we opened on Main Street on 106-108 uh, South Main Street to be exact. Now, when we went into that uh, area to open up the business, I didn't have to go through all of the hoops, which means going through all of what the township expected because of all of the people that I had, uh, you know, was was privileged enough to know because of the years of working at McNeil's, namely the mayor of the town, uh, a couple different business owners of the town. It was a very easy process for me to get a building and open up and start business. The very first time we opened up, we started up uh, our business on the uh, left side of Main Street, and we rented a building, and that is where we started our business when we came on to uh, Swanton with our beautiful, beautiful, beautiful idea. The first location, we had nothing but problems due to the landlord, the slack and the neglect of the landlord. His name was Mike Wells, and we had to deal with issues with leaking problems from the roof, all of the things that we had to go through. And he didn't want to fix anything, but he requested and forced us, tried to force us to pay rent. It was just not going to happen. He even went as far as to trying to take us to court, which we did not even uh, entertain because at the end of the day, there was no way in the world he could have ever explained to me how our plastic sign on the front of that building had anything to do with the several leaking uh, uh, potholes in that roof that was causing issues for our customers, which means I could not open the doors on certain days because there were puddles of water in the location after we had remodeled it completely from start to finish. From the floors to the paint to the shelving, it was all what we had done. When we got the building, it was an empty, vacant place. We completely revamped and turned that building into a place ready for customers However, it was so bad with the leaking issues. Not only that, he uh, uh, literally automatically every day would shut the bathroom lights off on us every single day. We had no control over when the lights turned off, whether we had customers in the building or not. It was the most big of a scam that you could imagine of a place to doing any business. Make a long story short, when we left the business, I went to the public and explained my experience with this guy and what happened with the business. Later down the line, we were offered an opportunity to open our business at a place that formerly used to be called a uh, uh, some type of a thrift store that used to be years upon years in Swanton. However, the building owner never told the new property owner that she was going to make a deal to sell the building with me. So somehow that property owner or the previous business owner found out that I was coming in to buy the building, essentially. And there were a lot of people that were not happy with the way that went down. It was not any fault of my own. It was not anything I did. I was just a person who was offered an opportunity. And the first opportunity that she offered me was not big enough for what we were going to do with our business. So I, although I accepted the opportunity, I told her that I would be changing and looking for a big place. And then from that place, she said, well, what if we offered you the whole entire lot in building and we worked out a deal with you? And then I said, yes, and that's how the deal happened. So the previous business owner 
had had no idea that this is what went down between me and this new business owner. And so it made me come into the town looking like I pushed the business out that had been there for 20, 30 years. And that was not the case. We opened up the new building. We remodeled the entire building from top to bottom. I spent my entire life savings painting, shelving, flooring. We stayed closed for two months preparing this building because I had such a meticulous eye on how I wanted to present my business to this community. So there was two months of us just completely preparing this building from top to bottom. And I'm talking about it was just me, my wife, and my brother-in-law. And we did everything we could to make this building professional, painting, shelving, which I'm going to show you guys here shortly. So the reality of it is this was a business that we couldn't wait to get into town with because we knew that this was going to bring in customers that would appreciate our business. Lo and behold, we came in and we started doing business. For eight months, that store brought in over $100,000 in sales. We also put a 105 plus ratings on Google, five plus perfect star ratings on Google in the eight months that we were open. Those were just the customers of that, that complete, that area. So we gained our customers and we kept our customers. The physical therapist's office in that town recommended their customers to our store. So we were not just the regular vape store. We were a store that most of our customers were elderly and we were assisting the elderly with different things that they could use other than medication to heal their issues. We treated people that had asthma. We treated people that had breathing issues. We treated people that had pain issues, arthritis, whatever the case may be. We had a product that they were able to use to ease the pain. So it turned into most of my customers being over 60 years old. We did not have customers that came in as young kids because this was not a place that sold any marijuana related products. In fact, at that time, we had to be within the legal limits, which meant every product we offered had to be under 0.3% of the THC legal limits. So at that time, we were not offering anything to the customer that could legally get them high, but there were products that we were offering from lotions to salves to drops, and we had nothing but customers in that Swanton area coming to our store. The first previous landlord harassed us every single day. I reported this to the police and nothing was done about it. Every single day he came by our store and decided to hunk his horn and lay on his horn just to irritate me or my staff. Now, in front of that store, we used to have a, it was a train that would stop in front of the store every single day. This guy would come through every day and literally honk on his horn just to harass us and nothing was done about it. Although I told it to the police, it was not acknowledged. We fast forward to eight months later, I had insurance on the building. I had taken a leave of absence for 13 days prior to, prior to January 17th, uh, 2021. Excuse me for one second. Okay, I'm back. Um, so I had taken a, a, a leave of absence about 13 days in, uh, in, in its entirety before the incident that transpired on January 17th, 2021 in this town. Um, what happened was the morning of January 17th, uh, I was notified by my alarm company that my store alarms were going off and there uh, obviously was something going on at the building. Now, I want you to understand, I'm insured at this time by State Farm's business insurance. It's supposed to cover in the event there's a thief, uh, any type of active robbery. It's supposed to cover my complete policy, especially though that I'm a business owner who does not even reside in the same town as my business. So I want you to understand that the police department, which was the Swanton Police Department, I want you to understand my business was directly next door to the most popular pizza 
place in the town of Swanton called Tano's Pizza, directly next door. My alarms at that store went off at 645. The police in the town, which were approximately five minutes walking distance from my location and knew exactly where my store was. Every single day, the police drove past my store two or three times a day because we were right there downtown Main Street. The businesses knew us because we were right downtown Main Street. Somehow, the police decided or did not show up at the location while this was going on at my store until 745. Now, I want you to understand that is where the issue starts for me, because I do not live anywhere near the store, and I was not even in the town for about 13 days before this incident transpired. However, I was treated from the moment, the very single moment that this happened, I was treated as the criminal. Now, I want you to understand I am a public uh, official for the state of Ohio. I'm a registered minister for the state of Ohio. I've held several financial positions in my life. I've worked as manager pl plenty of places in my life. I have a complete clean criminal record with no history on it at all negative. I have a complete clean background record. I have a complete clean driving record. However, I was investigated as a criminal seven days after this incident transpired when I was not even in the town. When I arrived at the location, I was fingerprinted by the police. I was interrogated by the police and so was my sister who was one of my employees this, at, the, at the time. My sister at the time had no vehicle and did not trust me. The people I knew did not hang around Swanton at six o'clock in the morning. There was only a certain people that hung around Swanton at six o'clock in the morning. It was me or my wife. Nobody hung around that I knew in this town because of the fact that I was very, very, very lit. I, at the time, was the only African-American business owner in the whole town. So I don't have people hanging around me that want to be in an area like that because they don't know what they might experience. I had worked in the town for almost seven years as the finance manager at McNeil Chevrolet, so a lot of people already knew who I was. But I did not have people hanging around in that town at six o'clock in the morning. However, the police interrogated me and my sister wrongfully, fingerprinted me as a criminal. I've already been fingerprinted to even be a, to be a notary, and you're going to sit here and fingerprint me like you're investigating me. I was not treated as a victim at all. Shame on you, Swanton. But this video is not to downplay or downgrade Swanton. This is to let you know what transpired with State Farm from day one. Now, I want you to understand when this happened, the day I showed up in the town, I did the very first thing that is required, which is contact your agent. My agent was six minutes from the store. For three different times, he never responded. The worst day of my life, my business is completely vandalized. The word, the slur words are nigger is sprayed painted on the wall. There's all kinds of, this complete, complete mess in this place. And Jeff Lambert, the state farm insurance agent that was supposed to be my agent in the same town, never answered my call. This prompted me to call the 1-800 number to start my claim. I started the claim. They started to pay out the claim. And within seven days, I was transferred to a special investigations unit for whatever reason to be investigated by some guy named Lonnie Johnson. Lonnie Johnson immediately treated me as the criminal. He never once treated me as a victim. As though he acted like as such, he did not once treat me as a victim at all. On my birthday of that year, I gave him five hours on the phone of his questioning, and I followed all of his instructions as he instructed me to do, but yet somehow I was turned over to State Farm's attorney's office for invest further investigation. Throughout this entire year, they asked me for document after document after document after document, which I provided to them. 
I even provided them additional documents about myself and my business before they requested to the point where their first attorney said it was too much. They couldn't even understand the documents. It was too much work. It's not my fault that I ran a business and I documented everything we did from the purchase to anything we bought and every piece of information I turned in ahead of time. However, this turned into State Farm spent over that whole entire year continuously asking for the same documentation over and over and over again, although they had it through several of my legal representations that I had. My attorneys had provided this information to them some way, somehow they could not keep track of what I was turning in. So it turned into them constantly asking for the same things over and over again as they stalled tactic to taking care of this incident. incident. Instead of this, them covering the incident like they should, this turned into now me losing the building that I had purchased on land contract recorded with the Fulton County Auditor's Office. This was not a regular rent-to-own rent to building, but yet I lost my building because they prolonged it so long, I completely lost my entire building. So at the end of the day, they never once covered me and they continue to ask me for the same things over and over again. Then they wanted to schedule a six hour questioning with their attorney's office. I showed up just like I looked today. I had on the same jewelry that I wear today. I went in and I sat through a six hour questioning from State Farm and I want you to understand that their attorney completely painted a picture about me negatively by making derogatory comments and publishing it on public paper. His comments were that I showed up braggadocious with a bunch of jury on with a loud tie on. This is a complete ridiculous statement that should not have ever been made about me when this is the way I've dressed my entire life, including when I worked at McNeil Chevrolet. But you get to make these derogatory comments and then ultimately you put down as a reason of why you deny my claim is because you feel like I had something to do with this break-in. That's what you type out. So you've made me look like a criminal to the public and you defame my character, although I have a 1000% clean record and I represent the state of Ohio. I can officiate documents. I've done all of these things in my life and you're going to sit here and incriminate me on paper. And you think that that's okay, State Farm? That's not okay. You ruined my professional career. You ruined my professional name and you defamed my character to the public when you had no right to do so. You had no evidence of me having anything to do with this. I had nothing to do with what happened with my business and you will answer to this. I am not going to stop until this is in front of a jury's office because you broke the law. You made this about what I looked like and you put that down as a reason as you, why you denied my claim. The entire time I was told not to say anything about the racial portion of this case because I could ruin the bad faith portion of the case. So I've been silent of what you actually did to me. But you will pay for this because this in racial discrimination and justice needs to stop, especially from companies like you. This is ridiculous. How can you say on paper that I committed insurance fraud, which is the other exactly what you said, but yet you don't bring any charges against me. You look at my record. I have never been in trouble in my entire life. And you play publish that about me. This is not okay, State Farm. So I want to share with the public what my store looked like. First, I want you guys, like I said, to sh like, share, and comment if you haven't got a chance to on our channel at Money, or not Money, but Word on the Street with Minister ML Kimball. This was the former CBD store. I want you to understand this is what we did to make this building ours. We did everything from the paint to the flooring, to the shelving, to the lighting, to every single design you see in this building because it was a complete dump when we purchased it. This is me overlooking the, 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 the progress of what we did with our store. The shelving, everything you see, we did. Now we get into what it started to look like when it was broken into.
This was the original look. The original look. The original look. We brought in all kinds of people for not just uh, 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 e-cigarette uh, products like people may think, but we brought in everybody that were dealing with issues, that were dealing with pain issues from, uh, from the age of 50 and up. And that was our core core customer. Look at some of the reviews for, from our store. Look at some of the, what our customers were saying about us. We were not just a regular retail joint, but however, State Farm decided to look at this and say that I had something to do with it when they had no evidence or proof of such and painted the picture that I'm a criminal when I am not, have never been in trouble in my entire life. So I wanna share with you guys the official paperwork that I have sent out to State Farm. I want you guys to understand exactly where this thing is gonna go because I'm not gonna stop until this, they are going to face judgment for what they did to me. There's that this is not okay. I it's one thing if I am a criminal and you want to put that out there, but you don't get to put that out there on public documents and then make defamatory, derogatory comments about my parents as to one of the reasons why you denied my legitimate business claim. Are you kidding me? You broke several laws and you're gonna have to answer to this. This is what I officially sent out. I was wrongfully denied business insurance coverage through State Farm, and my character was defamed throughout the community. I was falsely accused of committing a crime, and this information was publicly published. The court documents even made derogatory remarks about my attire, stating the client appeared to be very braggadocious, showed up at the meeting wearing a blue suit with a loud tie with a bunch of jewelry on, all in an effort to deny my legitimate claim. For an entire year, I patiently provided the same requested documents, only for State Farm to prolong their decision to deny the claim. Despite having zero evidence or proof against me, and despite having a spotless record with a clean criminal background check and a perfect driving record, I was treated as a criminal rather than a victim. It is very important to note that I am also a licensed minister registered with the state of Ohio, a certified recognized tax preparer, and a recognized notary agent in Lucas County. To make matters worse, I was robbed not only of my business, but also of my dignity. I was fingerprinted and interrogated by law enforcement who arrived at my business over an hour late, even though they were notified promptly by my security alarm system. It is truly unbelievable and deserves attention. Please share this experience with any person that you may know. As an esteemed representative of the Buckeye State of Ohio, I fervently hope that I am afforded the same constitutional rights as a dedicated public servant in order to have my case presented before a jury. Throughout this entire ordeal, numerous rights of mine have been compromised. And it is disheartening to witness the utter neglect and mistreatment I have endured at the hands of State Farm. I am determined to have this matter resolved in a court of law, not only to establish my innocence, but also to safeguard my professional reputation, which has unjustly been tarnished by the actions of State Farm. So I want you guys to understand that at this point in time, I am now speaking out as to what ex I experienced myself at the hands of State Farm. I don't know about you and what you've been through, but I will tell you that this racial discriminations, uh, the racial injustice, this uh, pre-painting a picture of what you think a person is has to stop, especially from corporations that take money to insure and claim to protect their insured. Instead of me being protected, seven days after this incident, State Farm investigated me. And that investigation turned into an entire year. My entire financial lifestyle was turned upside down, not to mention all of the things I've had to experience personally. But at the end of the day, State Farm, you will be held accountable. This is not okay. 
And as a representative of this great state of Ohio, I signed to witness that I would protect the Constitution from the United States Constitution to the Ohio State's Constitution when I signed my name. So if I can sign my name to that oath, don't sit here and make me a criminal because you're trying to not pay a legitimate insurance claim. You had no right to do that and you will pay for what you did to Marquise Kimball. Until next time, I'm the minister, ML Kimball. Be blessed on purpose.